After our backpacking trips in Kootenay and Banff National Parks, we had a little over a week left in Canada, so we thought we would escape the frenzy of the national parks in late July and head back to the Kananaskis area. We already had our annual password area already, so why not? We hoped to grab one of the first come first serve sites at Interlakes Campground, where 22 of the 48 sites face Lower Kananaskis Lake. Our first night, we grabbed a non-water site, but along that side is a clear cut full of berry plants. Our campground host informed us a female grizzly was slowly making her way south, so we kept running up there to spot her. Tina was the first to spot her. We saw her coming, so I grabbed the GoPro, set it up on a tripod, and pointed it near a buffalo bush full of berries. We stepped back to our campsite and watched remotely on my phone until she got within range. How often do you get to know exactly where a bear is heading so you can preemptively and safely film it? Admittedly, even from our campsite, it was very close, but we would find out later that bears walk to the campground all the time. This female was caught, collared, and tagged, and seemed not to care about humans or human food at all. At the time, we thought this was about as close as we wanted to get to a bear, but that minimum distance would be challenged a few more times over the next week. Where should I put the solar? Where should I put the solar? Should go over here? And then someone goes, hey, did you know there's a grizzly behind you? And I went, where? And that was where the grizzly was, right there. So I went, oh crap, grabbed this and backed up. Turns out she was digging up ants and eating the larva and then after we got around our car, <laughs> she wandered off that way, dug up another ant hive, and then just kept going. And we lost track of her. But that was this morning. That was the closest I've ever been to a bear on foot. And at that time, I thought, I don't want to be any closer to any bears on foot than that. That was pretty close. So... What a morning we had. But I did get my solar panel out and got plenty of solar today. Right here is the spot that the bear was digging up. When we first got here, it was just full of ants and ants carrying eggs everywhere. It was, a, it was crazy, but now there are, looks like the ants mostly recover the nest. But that's, that's pretty much it. From this spot, there's my car. And I was basically where that sun is, right over here a little closer completely unaware and the bear was here facing away from me so it seemed like she was unaware we were both completely unaware of each other although you know i guess we both have bad hearing inside or something from here she moved on up and then walked up and then she went by the pump over there i'll show you that so here's the hand pump that's near our campsite there's our blue tent in the middle of my car, just to the side. We were pretty much on the other side of the car watching it, and it walked by the pump, came over here, and dug this up. And then when we checked this out later, it was also full of ant larvae and ants. It just tore through the roots like nothing. From here, we were over there by the car, just to the right of the car, just kind of, I don't know, waiting out what happens. But there was also a trail right here and the bear stood here for a bit and we thought if something happened the bear was gonna beeline it down the trail straight for us so we were ready to get jump in the car if we had to at our campsite we have this hammock set up we pretty much just rest here it's really nice because you get good views of the lake and it's right near our campsite and we came here we both just sat in the hammock just you know 
We were actually watching Everyday Backpacker and his Jackass Pass series of videos where he went to the Wind River Range, and we were discussing it. And then we got a, we got quite a surprise. So this is basically laying in a hammock. Tina was on the right, I was on the left, and we were watching the video. So I hear a <laughs> sound, and I look over, and believe it or not, the moment I looked over, it was right there. <laughs> and I went, oh, and then. <laughs> The bear got so frightened, it jumped up the tree and then ran up the tree. And then Tina saw it, and then this hammock has a little opening on the bottom, so we can't both get out at the same time. So Tina got out first. Unfortunately, our bear spray is on the left, closer to the bear. So I wait till she got out, got the loop, reached for the bear spray, <laughs> gave it to her, and then I got out. But unfortunately, my shoes were on this side of the hammock and the bear was only maybe six feet eight feet higher than me so I do this Tina's safely away with the bear spray safety off and I get out I got drool on my hand as I'm getting out I look up and he's like yeah six feet higher than my hand I come around and then we walk backwards slowly the whole time while he's huffing and huffing and snapping his teeth together. And he was stressed out. He didn't get too high, but we kept backing up and then we walked around the field here. That's our hammock. The bear was about here, that high. He didn't get too high, maybe we're near where the knot is. And he stayed there for a long time. We backed up and he stayed there. So the whole time, yeah, I was about, I guess, 10 feet away from my head when I stood up. But he hung out for quite a bit. Here's a little trail here. So we backed up and then hooked to the left so we can go out to the next campsite and then get back onto the road. So we can kind of tell people there's a black bear around here. But the whole time we were out there, he was still in the tree and he didn't come down. We talked to several people on the street coming back. But as we came back, we carefully made our way. We didn't see him in a tree anywhere. He didn't go any up, any higher. But we thought maybe he came down. We thought he would have ran that way because we went that way. Because we scared him. He was huffing and puffing and just... <laughs> and uh, we were, our heart was be <laughs> were beating as well. But then when we got a little closer, we saw the bear in the bushes out here, just walking along in the open and into the trees. So he wasn't too scared of us because he hung out. He followed us in the direction we went and he kind of hung out in the area for a while. And then he didn't go too far. He didn't even make it to the next campground. He cut into the woods here and then we lost track of him. So the bear was a good, I guess a foot and a half away from my head. And he had no idea that this bright blue hammock where two of us were sitting there talking were there at all like we totally surprised him when he came up and well he totally surprised us i didn't hear him until he got real close tina thought i was just yelling at a raccoon or a squirrel or something but then she looked up and saw the black bear because it went up the other side and turned so it was on the right side so it could look at us so that's our close encounter story with the bears here at interlakes campground in kananaskis country in alberta and We've seen many bears here already. In fact, we saw a female, another male, several times now. We saw a mother and a cub on the other side of the street, which just kind of parallels the campground, so it's not too far. And we think this might be the same black bear we saw yesterday, just on the other side of the street as well. We're not sure. Um, there's no markings on them and no collar or anything, but we're pretty sure. But um, that was crazy. The, that's the crazy thing is like we go on all these hikes we walk through bushes and just bury bushes everywhere want to see bears we're out in the open every you know just everything we can to see bears and we're just hanging out in a hammock just watching a video on youtube and the bear winds up standing just a few feet from my head and the funny thing is he like turned and watched us and i always thought for some reason that bears would smell bad but this bear did not smell at all whatsoever. I didn't smell anything. I smelled the drool that was on my hand. It didn't smell. It actually smelled kind of good, which is weird. I put hand sanitizer on my hand just to clear it up if anything's on there. But uh, yeah, so 
close encounter with the bear story. Um, after this morning, I said that that was the closest I ever want to be to a bear on foot. And unfortunately, this afternoon, we beat it. And we didn't have any food on us. We had everything is in the car. All we had was our bear spray. We didn't even have bottles of water. I don't know why I came by. Um, curious, I guess. Maybe we both smell really good. But we were talking, and he didn't hear us. Crazy story. Across from the hammock is this. This is what we get to see. Well, not every morning because there's been a lot of smoke haze recently. But just beautiful mountains across this lake. It's amazing. It's a pretty nice lake too. You can go out there and just kind of walk around. There's another campsite on the other side. And people have said they've seen other bears walk here. And supposedly there's a black bear with a cub somewhere as well. But we have not seen that. Just a single black bear. Crazy times out here. Right next to the hammock, we were actually joking a bear might come by because there are buffalo berry bushes and they are, this one's got quite a lot of berries in there. The one next to it is a same kind of bush, but they, they don't have berries yet. And on the other side of the hammock are more buffalo berry bushes and past the grasses there, they are full of berries. They're a little small right now and there are more bushes here but they're, they don't have berries yet either. But uh, there's a lot of berries out here. But that one grizzly we saw this morning was digging up ant larvae. It seemed to care about that more than the berries. To give you an idea of where he was, there's kind of a print there. I don't know if it's a bear or one of us did it. But the bear was literally standing right here when I saw him. And I was laying in the hammock <laughs> and then he jumped up and we tried to find scratches in the tree because I thought when bears climb they leave a lot of scratches but we haven't really seen much. There looks like a fresh kind of hole there. I don't see any other marks that could indicate a bear climbed up this tree. I don't know if I'm just looking for things but that looks like a really fresh scratch maybe a nail mark. I think that kind of looks like one as well. Hard to tell. This is where the grizzly stood this morning and this is our campsite. It's the car. It's our little tent that we made into a mosquito tent. Our picnic table firing. So it wandered pretty closely. It's amazing. It didn't hear us at all. This is what we've been doing a lot lately. We wrap corn and foil with butter and a little bit of salt. And then we get roasted potatoes. And we're going to wrap two and cook them today. We're starting a fire. we got two big bundles here. And we also have our citronella candle right there. One of those UCO candles. And oh, there's my knife and hatchet back over there. And there's a foil. There's Tina. Or the bear. Or the bear. We were laying in the hammock again, we heard some crunching and we heard, we yelled out and we didn't hear anybody yelling back so we got up because we heard big branches cracking and there's a grizzly bear, I think right there, I don't know if you can see him, he's right there. Um, Different one than right before, it's not a shaggy one. Yeah, he's really fluffy looking. No color, no color. He looks good. I guess we're still a little too close. But a grizzly came, so it's a good thing we got up and good thing he was noisy because he was going to come bother us in our hammock again. I guess not him, but it's a different bear this time. Mm. I think that's the end of hammock time. No more hammock time? <laughs> we can't see him as well right now, but he's like right around there. And again, that's our hammock and he's right on course. And we know there's a bunch of berries over here. So... Yeah, so far the bears never got down to the lake. They stayed up higher, but I guess now it's time to harvest. Yeah. So there's the mama. We found out that uh, mama and a cub. There's the mama. Where's the cub? The cub's smaller, so we can't see him through the bushes as much. There goes the mama. We saw something smaller walk by. Behind her. Still behind the bushes right there. 
And if you look over to the side a little bit, that's our hammock. That's not a good hammock location. Anymore. I don't see her anymore. There they are. Right. If she stays down there, she'll be fine. Okay. You know, Mama's just taking her down to the beach. For coffee, I usually just drink instant Bolgers, and that's really it. I just need to boil water, so I use the kettle, and I use propane as the gas because it's cheaper than butane or isobutane. And I just use a little stove with it and a little adapter. And camp stoves work fine with the propane container, so I think that's like the easiest way to go with coffee. And there's no cleanup, really, so it's my preferred choice. To do our dishes generally anywhere, in some of the national parks, we did use the dish sink washing stations and just use soap and a sponge like real people, I guess. But we have a little spray bottle. It's got about half vinegar, half water, and a little bit of Dawn soap in there. And we find that it can clean up pretty much anything that we need. Like breakfast today, it was kind of 
oily because we use a bunch of butter, hash browns, and we fried up bagels in there. But what we do is just kind of spray some on here. Unfortunately, this sprayer broke because we bought like this super cheap like beauty <laughs> sprayer. So we have to get a new one. But we sprinkle some vinegar solution on here. Wipe it down with paper towel. Just wipe everything down. It helps get everything clean and gets all the oil off and kills all the bacteria that might be there. And then we pour a little water on it and we kind of rinse it out with another paper towel. And we take another paper towel and then we just dry everything up and it's all good to go. And that's our dishwashing method. We use very little water, but we do use several paper towels in the method. But, uh, you know, when you're in car life, you got to sacrifice something. You use less water, but you use more paper towels. But it's the easiest way to get it clean. Doing it this way also gets everything inside a garbage bag. You don't pour out any kind of food smelling water. You just get everything and just put it in a Ziploc bag and take it to the trash. I put the sticker on here so I always know which sides to up because if you put it down and you open it like this, the stove is upside down. But both sides are almost identical to good old PCT 2018 50 year anniversary sticker. Another common chore I do is filling water bottles from the five gallon container. So we still drink out of smart water bottles, just the way we do things. And they're really nice also, because if you're gonna go on hikes, they're hiking water bottles. But generally, from the five gallon, I'll fill this three liter container up, because it's got a big mouth. You can't fill these from the five gallon, it just goes everywhere. So you need something with a bigger mouth. And I like these, because you have a little handle you can hold on to and you could fill the one liters from these. So, this is my five gallon jug. After filling the one liters, I like to top this off before I put the five gallon away, just to reduce how many times I have to get this one out. On this build today, I have a, like a bartender mat here, so if any water drips from it, it collects here and doesn't spill anywhere. And I have just this strap with a little carabiner, and there's a little hook in a corner. And I hook it in the car, there's the picnic table, and off to our side, this site requires a sleeping unit here all the time, so if we drive away, we need a tent here, but we have this tent, of course, if you recall, this is the Ozark Trails beach tent that we've repurposed into like a mosquito tent by duct taping mosquito netting all along the top, and it survived some pretty fierce winds, like 45 mile per hour gusts, and it's still good, and we've also found, like, Surprisingly, it's the Ozark Trails tent that this nylon is very waterproof. It does come through the seams because it's not seam sealed at all, but water will pool and just drip off. So we could sit under here when it's raining and stay perfectly dry. Amazing, but it's held up well. In fact, when we leave for today, we put our chairs there, or when we go to sleep, we put our chairs there, just so if it rains, it stays dry. Crazy, right? Ozark Trails beach tent. Believe it or not, two days ago we actually got back in the hammock in the same place that we hung it last time when the black bear came by. And we were joking that, ah ha ha, maybe another bear will come by. Um, we got in the hammock, and it was only maybe 10-15 minutes before we heard snapping sounds. We yelled out, nothing happened, so Tina got up, looked, and there was a grizzly walking towards us, maybe 10 meters, 30 feet from where we were in the bushes. So we both got up and walked back. And then from our picnic table area, it looked like there was a cub, but we weren't sure because it was really small. But I actually followed them up the beach later and I saw it. it was the mom with the cub that we saw on the road before. 
And we think if the cub was not with her, we would not have heard her and she would have walked right by like 10 feet from where we were, like three meters, that's where the edge of the bushes are. So it was really good the cub was with there because the cub was a spaz and snapping twigs and everything. So we moved the hammock up in hopes that we don't get any more surprises and we can get more than 10 minutes of hammocking from here. And our hammock is a two person hammock. There's a little carabiner here. It's like one of those, like it can support a ton of weight, but it's not for climbing at all because it's not guaranteed. But it's good enough for backpacking. And we leave our tree straps in here. So we got our tree strap in here, we just hook in and then we just pull it out of this bag here and then hook into the other side. So pretty easy way to set it up once you get the straps up. Then tie this just loosely right here and then just tighten it up. I like these whoopee slings because you get better like distancing instead of knots. You just pull and it catches right in here. Pretty nice. These are from Hummingbird Hammocks. After you set it up you gotta try it out. It always settles a little bit. There's a little hole in the bottom. The bears have mostly come from that direction, so I think we should keep our head this way and we can also see the lake better. Oh, it's sunk low. We gotta tighten it up. So the other day our hammock was hung up on that tree right there and went behind this tree and hooked on this tree. So we we're kind of uh, on this side. The grizzly bear was maybe just in those bushes. We saw the back of it. So it wasn't too far. Not too far at all. 